Hey there. Welcome back. It's another live authoring of this thing, this book, this experience that uh, is flowing through me. If you are just joining us, feel free to dive in here. Uh, there's really no wrong place to jump in. However, you can also catch up on Telegram and on YouTube at The B Space. That's just the B-E, like who you be, space. Okay, before we dive in, I've got to give all the usual disclaimers. This is a fantasy memoir. This is a work of fiction that is inspired by events from my own personal experience. To some people, it will feel as truth. For others, it will f read as, as fiction, okay? Uh, where you fall on that and where you read between the lines is up to you. Anything that I talk about, it is your responsibility to not take my word for anything, but to go and do your own due diligence. Go do your own research. Go be discerning on your own. Weigh everything that you come in contact with um, in your heart so that you can discern what is true and what is real and what is good. Okay? All right. Without further ado. Oh, gosh. You know, I start to talk about this topic and I even think about talking about it and that the spiritual warfare that is upon me is great. See, there are things about the land of Oz that the land of Oz does not want you to know. The land of Oz does not want you to realize that she eats her young. She eats old too, but in a totally different way but we'll we'll get there before too long see the land of Oz is an upside down place an inverted place a place that has been perverted and inverted back towards the beginning of time yeah it's gone on that long do you remember the tale the tale of Adam and Eve in the garden. I want you to try on something today before we dive into this land of Oz because, see, context is everything. Context is everything and asking a question and being discerning and a critical thinker is necessary if you want to escape the land of Oz. See, the land of Oz is a sordid kind of place. It is addicted to the macabre, to the dark, to mm, the tortuous, torturous. <laughs> it is a place where people like to see what they can get away with. See, this place of Oz is very interesting. This land of Oz looks bright and shiny and wonderful from the outside. You ever had a relationship with someone like that? You know, someone that starts out all, all charming at the beginning and then you really get to know them and it's like the mask falls off and now you see what you're really working with? Well, the Land of Oz is kind of like that. And isn't it interesting as more is revealed? As more is revealed, things shift and timelines change. I want you to try on something today from this story from the beginning of time. I want you to try something on and not to buy it as truth, but maybe just to apply it. Just use it as a new lens. We are all in just a production studio after all in this land called Oz. See, the beginning story is about Adam and Eve in a garden. And there's a conversation with the serpent and there's a direct instruction from God, the living creator. Remember, the instruction was you can eat from any tree in the garden except that one. That one, the tree of knowledge. Now remember the serpent comes along and deceives Eve into eating from this tree. Now, we'll dive into all of that and what that means at a later date, but what I want to talk to you about right now 
You know, I see these pictures all the time. There's apples and there's figs. I'm allowed, actually, in this garden to eat apples and figs. Why on earth would they paint a picture of an apple tree or a fig tree? I, you know, I eat apples all the time. My daughter eats them maybe five times a day, and she has not yet been struck down by the rod of God for doing so. So this got me pondering. You know, as I'm, as I'm researching to really develop the, the setting in this land called Oz in this book that I'm writing. Now, what if it wasn't a fig? What if it wasn't an apple? What if that's not what God was referring to? See, because I happen to know something. I happen to know that we are made in the image of nature. We are made in the, in the image of God. And you can look around the planet let me correct that word. You can look around the plane. You can look around this realm. <laughs> We've been deceived. You can look around this realm and you can see evidence of that being so, of us being made in the image of nature. Look at your fingertips. Look at how those spirals mimic the rings on a tree. Look into your lungs and the placenta that grows in your womb as you develop a child. Does that not look like tree roots to you? See, now, human beings are very interesting because human beings, we are the finest of all creation. We are the leading technology in this space. We are the creation of all creation, and the thing that sets us apart is the fact that we can actually discern. We have conscious awareness and free will. Now, free will means that we have this God-given animal instinct within us, but we have free will and choice to not listen to it. That doesn't happen in the wild. The, the baby horse doesn't have free will choice over whether or not it stands up and walks right after birth. It just does it. It is instinctual and it is necessary. Now, we actually have free will choice if we're going to listen to that call that is coming through our heart, through our being. Now, you have free will choice, but there are consequences for the choices that you make. And consequences can be good, bad, right, wrong, whatever. That's just a human label. But there is a consequence for every single choice that is made, period. So I wonder, was God really saying, don't eat an apple or a fig? Or was God saying, no, don't eat. Oz, don't eat your young. Oz, do not eat the fruit from this womb. Oz, do not eat the fruit from this tree. And then I wondered for a little bit why they tied it back to an apple. And I went down this rabbit hole and I discovered that um, apple of my eye is a saying that actually talks about the pineal gland, the eye of Horus. And the pineal gland is the thing that actually connects people to a higher power, to something outside of Oz, to something outside the production studio, the, the box, the matrix, the trauma loop in which people become entangled. And that was very interesting to me. See, because if this kind of depraved behavior, which if you think about the fall of man, wouldn't that be the biggest fall that you could have? Wouldn't the biggest fall from God be to eat the innocence that God has gifted you with? And isn't that interesting? Wouldn't the biggest fall, the biggest trauma, the greatest event, wouldn't that lead to all the things that we now see in awe as trauma leading to? Addiction, murder, depravity, theft. This space called Oz is a place where I used to live. It's a, it's a place that is run, is constructed out of these loops of recurring trauma. It is a trauma cycle. It is a trauma loop matrix. It is an entire matrix, a cage built out of trauma loops. And a trauma loop is an energetic pattern, an energetic um, frequency holding pattern that latches you into place. It actually uh, alters your point of view. It determines your belief system. 
and it impacts what is available to show up in your life. So when we're hooked into the trauma loops of Oz, when we're hooked into that, all that can show up in our reality is Oz. And Oz is inverted. Oz is perverted. Oz is missing the mark. Why would you want to hit the mark? Well, you'd want to hit the mark because when you're actually hitting the mark, when you are being who you have been intended to be, when you are living by design the way that you were designed, when, when you're actually in line, congruent with that will for your life, that's where the power shows up. That's where your life shows up. That's where the well-being shows up. That's where the possibility and the opportunities show up. See, but Oz doesn't want you to have that. Oz doesn't want you to have fulfillment. Oz doesn't want you to have well-being, abundance, ease, joy. These things that are your birthright in the Garden of Eden. See, Oz twists things. Oz is the serpent that comes and whispers in your ear and gets you to go against your own inner knowing. That own, your own conversation with the living creator, with the source that flows through you. But this, this thing, this serpent will come and speak to you and will get you to do things that are not in line, that are not congruent with who you really are. See, in the land called Oz does this all over the place. And we had to have this talk before I dive into this conversation about medicine in the land of Oz because you need to know the level of depravity and the level of evil that we're working with. See, in the land of Oz, if you do not understand that it was not an apple, okay? It's not an apple that they ate. These are dark, dark decisions, dark, dark entities. If you do not understand that in Oz, there is a spiritual war that is being fought right now between light and dark, between good and evil, the evil will trick you every time. And they do so with a big, charming, shiny smile and a whole bunch of bribes. It's called breadcrumbing. It's what narcissists do to drag you along. It's called breadcrumbing. Okay. <laughs> so in this land of Oz, this land of Oz is ruled by people that are ha have an inverted morality system, an inverted compass. They actually enjoy harming other people. Now, if you're on this video, do you enjoy harming other people? I don't. I really don't. Now, that being said, I lived in Oz and I was programmed by Oz. So have I harmed other people in my life? Oh, you bet. You know, I guarantee there are plenty of people out there that would say, Brooke is the villain in my story. I have to own that. I have to acknowledge that. I have to notice where I've missed the mark and then be willing to amend my behavior. That's what it means to repent. It means to actually notice, like to come into awareness. Whoa, I have not been behaving in a way that is congruent with me and what I believe. And I am now going to amend my behavior. I'm not going to throw out a flowery apology. That means nothing. I'm actually going to change the problem that is within me. And when we repent and when we amend our behavior and we change direction, we can immediately, there is no delay. We can immediately become congruent with our path again, with who we are again. Now we have to have this talk because so many people have been misled by the land of Oz. See, the land of Oz is clever. It speaks in, in tongues and creates division, chaos, and confusion. It gets you to question that still small voice within you. That is the voice of God. It is your internal GPS system. See, <laughs> let me get a drink of water. I love when I think to freeze some water when it's hot out like this. See, the hardest thing to grasp 
you're buying the story that that was just an apple in the Garden of Eden, and if you don't want to acknowledge that Oz eats her young, literally, uh, if you don't want to acknowledge that, you will never be able to see the level of evil, the level of depravity that exists in the rest of the system of Oz. That is the basis. That is the, the first thing that happened that created this line of thinking and this line of behavior that has developed the matrix. Okay. Um, we don't operate on that level. If you're here and you're watching this, chances are you don't operate on that level. And if you do, um, please click off of my video because, uh, for real, check yourself before you wreck yourself. Got to understand, the system has been operating the way it was designed. The system of Oz that, that has been built is not broken. It was just designed this way. <laughs> yeah, it was designed this way. So like, look around, look at all the people that are walking around with chronic illness. Oz was designed to create that. Look at all of the stuff going on in Oz. Yeah, it was designed to be that broken. It was designed to create broken people. Why? Because it was created by evil people. And, and like the sooner that you can get a hold of that, evil does exist on the planet, but so many people want to bury their head in the sand and they want to not acknowledge it. They want to like turn a blind eye. Oh, what about the greater good? You really think that the person that is trying to bribe you and coerce you cares about your good? You really think that the system that has created the obesity the heart disease, the strokes, the suicide, the depression, the addicts, the mass shooters. That's a whole other conversation. We're not even going to touch that with the 10 foot pole today. You really think that that system that turns out those kinds of people, and I was one of them. They diagnosed me with depression and medicated me and medicated me and medicated me and then diagnosed me with bipolar because the medication wasn't working and medicated me and then I self-medicated because what they taught me was well you medicated away but the truth was that I'd been hurt for a very long time and I I had experienced significant trauma and there were things stored within me that were making me ill the truth is, is that from the beginning of my life, I didn't stand a chance at mental or emotional health because the land of Oz put me on antibiotics 12 times, 14 times before I was two. See, the land of Oz doesn't care about keeping you healthy or well. The land of Oz doesn't look at the entire ecosystem of your body as an ecosystem. The land of Oz wants to look at one little area. They want to get you hyper-focused on one specific thing so that you are distracted and you don't notice what is going on everywhere else. And yes, I'm talking micro level within your body, macro level within the world right now. If you listen to me speak, I'm always speaking on many layers. So watch this again because it will hit you in a different way. There is information coming through right now that is activating certain parts of your higher self and your unconscious mind into action. Thank you for being here. Medicine in the land of Oz is a mess. It's not designed for well-being. It's designed to make you a lifelong customer. You know, at the end of her life, really interesting. I feel like I've had a bunch of experiments in my life. So I had one grandma who was super negative, always complaining about everything, went to her doctor for every little thing and ate like crap, lazy, just sat on the couch all day. Anyway, 
she would go to her doctor and her doctor would say, well, hey, we just ran this test and we noticed this thing about you and you really need to get this under control. So then she would go in for a surgery or they would pop her on another pill. And then inevitably there would be side effects. You know, like in the land of Oz, when you're watching commercials or you're watching a show and then all of a sudden, like 10 times the volume of the show, the commercial pops on. And they've got like butterflies and unicorns and rainbows. And they're like, hey, do you ever have trouble sleeping? Do you sometimes get headaches? Are you feeling down and out and blue? Well, we can fix it for you, right? And then they've got some pill. And then like there's like two minutes of side effects. And the side effects actually include the worst case scenario of the thing that you're trying to prevent. Okay, well, that's how the Land of Oz works. So I watched my grandma go to these doctors and they'd put her on a pill or they'd do a surgery and then she'd have a crazy side effect. And then to counteract the side effect, they'd do something else. They'd put her on another pill. So at the end of her life, she was on 33 pills a day. At the end of her life, she was on 33 pills and she was bedridden and they had her hooked up to all these hoses and shit. And never... Never in the, I was 18 when she passed, in the 18 years of my life, never, never did she get a, a second opinion. Never once did her doctor talk to her about nutrition. Never once did her doctor talk to her about stress or the state of her emotional well-being. Never once did they talk to her about her complaining problem or the fact that she like preyed on other people like me. That stuff eats at you. Okay, so when I see people that are not well, I know that there is a, likely a lifetime, years, decades, sometimes generationally. Now, I don't believe that things can be passed down generationally if you are aware of them and you make a conscious choice to do something about it and choose something different. I think a lot of times the generational thing, because there is actually, we can change our genes. We can activate new genes. Okay. But when you're not conscious and you're not aware, you will inevitably repeat the patterns that have come before you. You will inevitably recreate that over and over and over again. And how much, how much do we like, unconsciously look to our families and to our parents for how our body should be and how our body should be responding. How many people say, well, gosh, I have, it's just a genetic thing. Oh yeah, that just runs in our family. Well, you know what? It can run out with you. You can be the one that actually is like, no, I'm done with that. It's really interesting. I went to the chiropractor the other day. I love the chiropractor, by the way. Um, you got some stuff going on in your body. You're probably out of whack by design. I digress. I went to the chiropractor the other day and suddenly all my stuff's popped back into place and I'm not hurting. How many people go to the doctor and get hooked up on narcotic painkillers in this land called Oz when their body is just out of alignment? See, you were created by design by an intelligent creator and all along your spine from all the way up here down to your tailbone you've got your spinal column and your spinal cord and in between each one of those vertebrae there are nerves that actually go to all of your organs and so if your spine is out of whack your organs and your brain stem and your brain are not communicating it's you got a kink in the hose and so you go and you get that put back into place and now suddenly all of your body commu can communicate with itself again and your body is self-healing. You know how like the cat is self-cleaning and we all wish the laundry was self-cleaning? Well, your body is actually self-healing. Your body, when it is supported, when it's not buying into the bullshit of Oz, knows how to function. But Oz is full of a bunch of shit. And you know what? We've got to acknowledge that too. We've got to acknowledge, well, why would someone want to do this to me? Well, because they're evil. Because you know, all of those scary horror movies y'all have been watching and those crazy crime show TVs, TV shows, do you know why they come out with that? Because they want to desensitize you to what they are doing. They want to make it seem like it's so natural and normal so that when you hear about them doing it, you're like, huh. 
That's what it is to be alive. No, it's not. It's depraved, disgusting behavior. Okay? It's gross. <sighs> okay. I'm gonna calm down. <laughs> See, look. The Land of Oz doesn't function like you do. The Land of Oz does not function how, how God, how Source functions either. It is contrary to nature. If you haven't watched it yet, I did a church chat last week called There's Something About Mary. You need to go back and rewatch it because there is scripture in there that talks about this. You die because you believe what tricks you. Now, what's tricking you? Oz is tricking you. Top to bottom, back to front, Oz is tricking you. Yes, follow the money. The money is the only thing that, that tells the truth. They've made money God, and so follow the money. And so, you know, I did this. I, I went back and I followed the money. Some interesting things were happening. You know, we had the Industrial Revolution back in the early 1900s. Um, and with the Industrial Revolution and factories uh, came coal and oil and petroleum became a very large business in the land of Oz. They discovered that they could pump this thick, rich oil up out of the earth. And they realized that they could fuel all kinds of things. And I've got to tell you that in the land of Oz, what the people of Oz see, technologically, medically, what the people see, what is divulged to the people is... Um, outdated. Like, I don't, I don't even know another word for that. Very outdated. What the overlords of Oz are using against the people of Oz um, is significantly more technologically advanced. 50 to 75 to 100 years more advanced. Okay, so if you could just imagine, like, being back in World War II time and actually having the kind of technology that I'm using today, what you might be able to pull off if you had access to this kind of technology, but no one else did. That's the kind of thing we're working with right now. So in the land of Oz, the petroleum industry came about and they were pulling up oil from the earth and they realized they could fuel all these things, but then they had all this byproduct. And you know, they've already built a booming business. They already became tycoons. So let, we need to use all of this that we can. And oh my gosh, this is a great thing to be able to start wars over. And let's make these plastic things out of it. Oh my gosh, we could sell more plastic things if we made them single-use plastic things. You know what? We're building things to be too quality. Oh my God, we can't have quality things. Make them break faster so people will buy them more. And I know some of you are listening and you're like, well, what does this have to do with medicine? Like the title of this is medicine. Well, it has everything to do with medicine. See, because they wanted to be able to use the leftover petroleum shit in other ways. And so they revamped medicine. They actually had an agenda. The entire agenda was to depopulate They've talked about it, like, stop denying it. They talk about it repeatedly. They have a depopulation agenda in this land of Oz. In the land of Oz, they do not want people healthy or well. They want lifelong customers, and the sooner they can kill you off, the better. So they do all kinds of things, and they do it from birth to these people in Oz. The people in Oz from birth are poked and jabbed, Injected with known carcinogens, heavy metals, neurotoxins, aborted fetal baby cells, formaldehyde, which is used to preserve bodies. That's an interesting one. They start there, and in this land called Oz, they, they try to uh, copycat nature. So they convince mothers that rather than using the milk that's made from her body that she should give them this factory created thing. But the things that emulate nature are never nature. They're never made with perfect design. 
See, there's a, a thing that happens when a mother breastfeeds her baby. She transfers her immune system to the baby. She, I just got chills. She gives her baby a start at life. She actually prepares the gut biome for the baby to be able to thrive. Now, I do agree a fed baby is better than a not fed baby, all right? I got little boobs. They couldn't keep up with my kids long term. But isn't this interesting that in the land of Oz, like from, from birth, they would mess with the food supply? From birth. So they mess with the food supply from birth and they make weird imitations. If you read a package, like go get a package of, of anything. Go get a package of fruit snacks or whatever. It'll say natural flavorings on the back. Do you know what that is? They find a delicious tasting, I don't know, strawberry, mango, whatever. They find a delicious tasting one from nature. And then in the lab, they create a chemical, synthetic version that matches that flavor. And they call it natural flavor. There is nothing natural about it. You need to know this. So they mimic nature. They inject these toxins. They alter the food supply. They poison the water. See, in the cities of Oz, the water, number one, the cities in the land of Oz are never built places that can actually sustain the population that will end up growing there, and that is by design. See, they begin to build these big metropolises in called Oz, in the land of Oz, and they build these big metropolises with no care or concern over the resources in an area um, or how pollution will be handled or traffic or water or growing space or anything like that, and they do it by design because if they can build and they can get enough population built in an area where there are now scarce resources, where there now is climate change in that, in that area, where there now is pollution in that area, they can then pitch a narrative. And the narrative all ties back to that depopulation agenda. Okay? And it all comes full circle, and it's all a part of this trauma loop matrix that they've created. If they can keep people in a state of stress and in a state of trauma, they can make you not well. There are people that are in the medical system in Oz that wouldn't be in the medical system in Oz if they had good, clean water to drink. If they were eating and had access to real food, food you can identify from nature, that is not a science experiment. They would discover massive, miraculous healing in their body if they were not constantly instructed and shamed into carrying around all their emotional baggage. They would discover that their body would actually come back into a state of healing and wellness if their body was supported in that wellness. See, Oz, Oz convinces you that some lab rat with a stethoscope and a white coat outside of you who stares at a Petri dish all day, that that person somehow knows your body better than you. That that person <laughs> somehow can fix something that wasn't broken to begin with. See, you're born whole, perfect, and complete. Provided that you weren't interfered with. Provided that you weren't hijacked. Okay, I know some people are going to be like, well, my kid was born with disabilities. My heart goes out to you. How much were you hijacked? How much were you poisoned and polluted? And then how much that happened while you were pregnant? Like how much of this goes back generationally? How many things are we, and just, just ask your own awareness. I don't have a number for this. I don't know if you could look this up. I don't know if it's quantifiable, but how much illness and dis-ease that exists right now in this time and space, how much of it has been manufactured? <gasps> I don't know. I just felt like someone kicked me right in the chest. 
feels like a lot. See, medicine in the land of Oz, they'll get you on the food front, but then they'll also get you with the busyness and the stress. Stress is the number one offender. Stress. Stress shows up as, you know, it might be a stress on your body. Maybe you've had a, a physical trauma, a car accident, a fight. Um, some, some semblance of like you had fight or flight come up in your hormones, come up in your system. Stress might be like you really hate your, your boss or your job and you feel like you're going to battle every day. You're in a heightened state of stress. You have high baseline stress. If you're sitting in a lot of traffic, if your schedule is too busy, if you have too much month left at the end of your money, if you're living in poverty, if you are um, around people that quite frankly are jerks to you constantly, if you are not following the call of your heart but you're instead allowing yourself to be pushed and bulldozed by other people, that will cause stress. Uh, a lot of the cures that they try to give people actually create stress including my beloved coffee that I love so much. I have to be aware of it though, like caffeine actually can stress your system. How many people walk around like just chugging energy drinks all day in the land called Oz? How many people um, suddenly seem to care about their health but they haven't cared about their health up until now and now they wanna yell at you to take care of their health for them? See, that's the land of Oz. That's the crazy making, crazy thinking, mental gymnastics that happen in the land of Oz. In the land of Oz, they actually believe. It's like, well, hey, why don't you take your birth control for me so I don't get pregnant? You know, if, if you don't brush your teeth today, mine are going to rot and fall out of my head. Come on now. But this is the kind of thing that happens in that realm, in the land called Oz. And in the land called Oz, they actually take people, intelligent people, people that um, have focus and have drive and a desire to help. And they take those people and they single them out and they put them in specific programs and gifted and talented things and put them on the fast path for college prep and then they go to med school and they learn all these things from these big textbooks and it takes a long time and costs a lot of money so we better listen to them. But what did they learn in all those years at school? Were they learning about the ecosystem that is the human body? Or were they learning how to be sales reps for a pharmaceutical company that doesn't care about your health or well-being, that just wants to profit off of you? Now again, don't take my word for it, but look at your life. Look at the lives of those people around you. Look at what's actually happening in the land called Oz. Like, if, if the medical system in the land called Oz was effective, don't you think people would be getting increasingly more healthy, more vibrant, more well? Don't you think we would hear stories all the time about how people had recovered from this and we have a cure for that and isn't this marvelous? Now, do you hear about that? <laughs> See, medicine in the land of Oz is so backwards, but they've put so much emphasis on what it takes to be successful and um, they've put so much weight on the accolades of earning certificates that now people don't trust people's real life actual experience they want to talk to somebody in a lab coat they will actually say such absurd things to you as I don't want to hear your personal experience oh hey trauma room nurse I don't care about what you've been experiencing this year and a half I'm only going to listen to the person with doctor in front of their name do you realize how absurd that is do you realize how limiting that is? Do you realize how many people 
If that is truly your belief, do you realize how much you're robbing yourself? How much you're denying and lying to yourself by not being willing to take in more information? Get all of the information and then discern what is true and what is real. See, in the land called Oz, this crazy place that I'm talking about, censorship is at an all-time high. The king does not allow people to actually speak the truth, and the king will censor anybody that dares get near it. And quite frankly, those with discerning eyes in the land called Oz see that kind of behavior, and they know that which has been censored has been censored because it was bang on target right over the mark, threatening to the agenda. See, the truth is only censored in the land called Oz when it is contrary to the agenda. So they have a whole agenda, a plan, these overlords in the land called Oz. They have a thing that they want you to believe. And they'll do anything to have you believe it. Anything. So medicine in the land, land of Oz is not about well-being, despite the fact that many people choose to enter that field, hoping to help people reach well-being. How do I know this? Well, because the same thing happens in the education sector in the land of Oz where good hearted people such as myself like come into a field and they want to they want to teach they want to do this from their heart but then you get into it and you realize that all of it is not what it seemed at all that like what they're doing is actually not what you believe in so we're at a time and space where we need to be really honest with ourselves are we continuing to participate in and um, perpetuate patterns that are no longer serving us. We can't just stick around and allow that kind of behavior to continue when we see it so clearly. Okay, when you see something so clearly, you must actually amend your behavior. You must repent and change direction. Otherwise, you are continuing to sin. You are continuing to miss the mark. And you know what the mark is? The God-given mark. You have an immune system. We have on our planet all that we require from nature that can resolve everything that could be happening in the physical system. You were not created broken. You were not created to be here and be unwell. You were designed whole, perfect, and complete. It is Oz that has convinced people that they are broken. It is Oz that has broken people. And quite frankly, you can't heal in the same environment where you were hurt. I say this time and time again, and this is just my personal experience. Western medicine saved my life and it cost me my health. Now, I think a lot of it's great in an emergency situation. They can do some really cool things. They fixed my eyeballs. I can see again, y'all. I'm finally willing to see, so that helped. But they fixed my eyes. I don't need my glasses to find my glasses. All right. But the more that I went back to them, the more ill I became. And I started to tell my story. You know, it started when I was little. I got ear infection after ear infection after ear infection. And they just kept taking me back. And they kept putting me on antibiotics. Well, did you know after you take antibiotics, it takes two years for your gut biome if you're conscious about it and you're working on it. It takes two years for your gut biome to rebuild itself after you take antibiotics. Did you know that in your gut, that's where 70% of your immune system is housed. That's where the vast majority of serotonin, which is the feel good, happy hormone is produced. Neurotransmitter, pardon. Okay. So like if you don't have this happy, feel good stuff being produced and you don't have an immune system, all your good soldiers, all the good bacteria, all that stuff that actually helps keep you well has been killed off. And then we wonder why people don't feel well. We wonder why people walk around sad, depressed, 
ill with IBS symptoms. Are you shitting me? <laughs> Pun intended. For real though. So they, they did that. And then, and then I had trauma, right? And my parents got divorced and I don't know. I was a nineties kid. Like whose family has ever been perfect? Mine was not. All right. So you stack up all of these other traumas and you stack up all of these other things. And you don't even necessarily realize that what you went through was traumatic because you're a goldfish in a bowl. And you don't know the quality of the water that you're swimming in until you get out of the bowl and you realize like, well, wow, there's ponds and lakes and rivers and stuff, right? So I just, I just didn't know, but all of these things were affecting me and they were like masks and layers and things that I piled on myself that cut me off from who I really am, that had me see the, the world through a different lens, that had me pause and procrastinate and give up on myself. None of that is who I truly am. None of that is who you truly are. So then you fast forward and, you know, I'd had enough stuff go on that when alcohol was presented as, as a teenager, I went ahead and drank it. <laughs> I split an entire bottle of 99 bananas with one other person. I was 13. Don't do that. Don't do that. That is way too high a proof of alcohol, way too much sugar. That was a really bad decision. See, but I knew it. I knew in that moment when that buzz hit me, when it took over, I knew I was going to have a problem with that thing because that thing, that substance, which is the real gateway drug, by the way, actually the real gateway drug is trauma because it was the trauma that led me to the drinking. But in the moment of the drinking, when the buzz hit me, I realized that I didn't feel that hole in my soul for just a moment, that I suddenly felt a little bit different, like maybe I fit in. And that thing would become my solution for a lot of things for a long time. And that too is by design. See, and then that thing that I used as my solution actually led me down a road which caused me to get more hurt. Like I'd been traumatized, but now I was so hurt that I was leading myself into other spaces where I could be hurt again. It was like almost as if I felt like I deserved it. I didn't know how to say no. I didn't know how to leave. Leave. I didn't know. And so instead, I walked repeatedly into the lion's den and then wondered why I got bit. But it was unconscious. It wasn't something that, like, I ever could have controlled. And so you fast forward a couple of years and I find myself in trauma and more trauma and now the trauma is so severe and I've been programmed. I've been programmed and groomed. You don't talk about it. You shove it down. Oh God, what would other people think? Think about the greater good. Don't say anything. That might ruin their life. That might break up a family. Shove it down, Brooke. So I did, like a good girl. See, but it started to eat away at me from the inside out and it was boiling like acid through my system and it hurt. And rather than sit and feel the hurt or share it with someone else, because that wasn't allowed, what I did was I medicated it away. Why? Because that's what they were already showing me to do. I looked around, I looked at the TV, I listened to the music and it seemed that the way to deal with the issue was to drown it out. Just drown it away, numb it out, take on the food, the alcohol, the substance, the sex, the shopping. What's your thing? And that's by design. That's by design. That's the system as Oz was created working the way it was created in perfect harmony. Now that's totally jacked up, I know. I know, I agree. But you must know thy enemy if you want to escape the snares of it. <laughs> so here I am, teenager, addicted, addicted to things that, I don't know, I don't know, whatever your conception of the craziest party girl you've ever met, multiply that by 10 and you might have a taste of Brooke, Lynn. <laughs> And truth be told, I wouldn't trade that for anything because that experience in my path has made me who I am. 
but now I see it so clearly. See, they looped me in with trauma, and quite frankly, they, they got me with the music and the media. They got a bunch of us. They were subliminally programming us to go then act out behaviors that are insulting to your soul and damaging to your heart. And quite frankly, that can make your body sick. And then we wonder why so many people are in a sick state of health. Well, it's because of all these things that I'm talking about. Trauma, over medication, um, no kind of community, no kind of support. No one knows how to deal with these issues. No one wants to talk about them. Everybody just wants to medicate it away. They want the quick fix, the magic pill. They think that the thing, there's something that's gonna help them that's not actually gonna help them. When they keep going back, and every time they go back, they're given something else. But it's just a Band-Aid. Y'all, it's like punching a hole in the wall and then hanging a picture over the hole rather than fixing the hole in the wall. Eventually, you're going to get sick of living there or sick of the picture, and you're going to take it down and the hole is still there. <laughs> See, this is the thing that people just don't get. And the problem is it happens a little plus a little plus a little at a time. And people don't notice a little bit happening. I mean, look around your, your home. How many things have has your house now accumulated that, if you're honest, you're like, I don't even know how they got here. Oh, my God. How did my whole house get so full of stuff? A little plus a little plus a little at a time. And when something happens, a little plus a little plus a little at the time, it's like, the crab in the pot. I mean, you could do it with the frog too. You put a frog or a crab in the bottom of the pot and you turn the water up real slow. You put it in a cold pot to begin with and you turn on the flame and that pot will heat so slowly that that frog that could have jumped out of the water at the beginning, no problem, ends up boiling alive in his own hot tub. See, the same thing happens to people. It happens a little plus a little plus a little. It eventually equals a lot. Or you maybe have a lot. Is it maybe time to really about face, repent, amend, and do something different because it's just not working anymore? You can apply that to all areas of your life. See, look, because the thing that actually finally saved me, um, I took a program that got me to put my past behind me. Hakuna Matata. Okay, it got me to really look at um, where I was still perpetuating the story that I had created about the situation. Okay, so you've got some, something will happen. Big event, big event happens. Well, when the big event happens, it triggers something inside of me. If I've got some past experience stored in my memory files, and this, this current upset reminds me of a previous upset, my cute little brain is pulling up all of those files of that past experience, and it's adding it to this present moment. And in the, the same time, it's pulling up all the emotional reaction of that past experience. And so now, what happened now has all of this extra stuff, this extra baggage, and this emotional reaction mixed in. And so I take what happened and I make a story out of it, out of this emotion. Well, now people will hang on to the story and all of that emotional baggage forever, but they forget what actually happened. And they forget that there's like three sides to every story. Yours, mine, and the truth. Just exists somewhere in between, right? But they'll hang on to this and this emotional baggage, this stored trauma, this stored stress, is the thing that actually gets stuck in your energetic body and it is the thing that causes the illness and the dis-ease, the lack of ease in your physical body. So there are many people walking around right now that don't actually require a medication. They don't have a chemical imbalance. They've got an emotional baggage problem. They've got a problem with the fact that their food has been so messed with that they're not getting the nutrition that they need for their brain to function properly. You know, some people do have a chemical imbalance, but a pharmaceutical chemical will never fix that. You don't have a pharmaceutical deficiency. You wouldn't require it. You wouldn't have a chemical imbalance if you were actually getting what you needed from, 
from your food, from your water, from your connection with other people. You know, when I see so many people suddenly popping up, and I mean suddenly, like, since the 70s or so, it's been really going on since they introduced the standard American diet, you know, that food pyramid thing. Um, obesity has been on the rise. Heart disease has been on the rise. Depression has been on the rise. All of these things have been on the rise. So is domestic violence, suicide, addiction, drug use, um, physical violence, shootings, like you name it. So when I see things like this happen as a scientist, my question is, what's causing it? Not, oh my God, now it showed up. <laughs> Let's slap a Band-Aid on it. No, what is actually causing it? What is the root? Because if you can get to the root and you can pluck it up by the root, you can dissolve the entire thing. You can, you can dissolve the entire problem. But we've got a fungus that has infected the ecosystem of our human bodies and it is misinformation. When we were living in Montana, we stayed six weeks in a little town called Hot Springs, and it was delightful. Um, you know, I, I love taking a bath. It's like my favorite thing. And so when I gave up my bathtub when we left our house, I knew I needed to go find as many of nature's bathtubs as possible. So we went to 30, we've been to 35 of them. I've been to 36 in my life, 35 of them on this adventure. And we found ourselves in Hot Springs, Montana. And Hot Springs, Montana has some of the most mineral rich water that comes out hot, hot, hot straight from the earth. Some of the best water in the whole world. In fact, if you were to go soak in that kind of water in Europe, you would pay several thousand dollars to go be there. So we pulled in and um, Hot Springs is a teeny tiny ghost town. It's tiny. The average family income for the year is $20,000 a year. Um, it's on a reservation. There's a lot of poverty. There's a lot of like shanties that look like they're going to fall apart. There's a really big methamphetamine problem. And there's this magical healing water. See, back in the 60s, it was this buzzing, hop, happening, hop in town. It was a place where uh, people would come and it had hotels and big pools. And people would come to this space and they would sit in this water and they would call it big medicine because it is. Well, in the 70s, in the early 70s, the medical establishment came out. I'm going to back up a minute. The sign at Big Medicine even says, limp in, leap out. That's how powerful the water is. Okay. So in the early 70s, the medical establishment of the land called Oz came out and said, hot springs and mineral water does no such thing as healing. That's not... Uh, three-letter agency approved. And the Centers for Disease and Control, which is that, that's what they do, by the way, the Centers for Disease and Control, they actually create disease so that they can control. All right. Um, they came out <laughs> and, and they said this, that hot springs water doesn't actually do anything. And so people stopped coming to the town and the town died and the hotels are like it's not even a hotel anymore. It's a boarded up, falling apart thing. The town died. Everything there died. I wonder how many other people died that would have come there and actually had the water heal them because the water is so mineral rich that when you sit in it, your skin is the, gi the, the biggest organ on your body. It is a giant sponge and your skin absorbs things from the environment, from the water. And so people that were actually having functional illness, Functional illness is a domino, a cascade event of, of effects that happen within your body when you don't have the proper nutrition, when you don't have the proper vitamins, minerals, nutrients in your system, which by the way, most of us don't because we've been on antibiotics since birth and we've been poked and our food system has been obliterated. You know, in the land called Oz, they create corn that causes insect stomachs to explode when they eat it. 
Now the benefit of that is that the corn doesn't end up getting eaten by insects. But who ends up eating the corn? Now, even if you don't eat like corn on the cob, you, you eat corn, they put corn in freaking everything. They put corn and soy in freaking everything and they've genetically modified all of it. It's all a science experiment. So if you think that you have somehow averted or escaped what they've been doing to all of us, you have it. I'm sorry you haven't. It's been that rampant, like even if you're really careful But we have to have this kind of conversation. We have to talk about what, what has actually been going on in Oz and why people are so unwell in Oz. Because you've got a God-given, perfectly designed immune system. But you got all of this other stuff that's killing it off. Vinny says, I love alcohol. Uh -huh. So much I let it go three years ago and I've never let it come crawling back to me. You know, alcohol is an interesting one. Um, it's the most socially acceptable. It's the most peer pressured. God, I've never been peer pressured so much, even as an adult, as I have with alcohol. Well, I mean, except for this crazy thing that they're doing to people now. This is an absurd amount of peer pressure for an experimental drug. You know, like back in the day, had someone tried to pressure somebody into doing what they're doing now with like, say, meth, you probably would have knocked them out. But, you know, alcohol is an interesting one because it's like, it's so socially acceptable. It's the thing, right? I would leave work and you go to happy hour. <laughs> Here's the one hour a week you're allowed to be happy at happy hour. By the way, ingest some liquid depressant. That is also called spirits. So that way other spirits can come and take over your energetic body. You guys ever wondered why bar fights happen so frequently when there's alcohol? Why disagreements between partners happen? Why crazy stuff happens with alcohol? It's because it's spirits. It's called spirits for a reason. You're actually allowing another spirit, another entity into your energy. Now, I, I like to have a beer once in a while. And that's a place that I've gotten to. But chickadee, check yourself before you wreck yourself. And this is coming from a girl that wrecked herself, like quite a lot, okay? That's something that will actually eat away at all of your health and, and all of your well-being. And it's by design. It's by design. They actually want to keep you unwell. They want to keep you numbing out with things like that. You're numbing out with things like that. You don't have time to connect with yourself. You don't feel well enough to actually go chase your dreams. You're just blotting out your existence until the bitter end. See, for me, it took me a while to get this. And I had some moments where like, I'd have a little bit of a breakthrough and then I'd have a backslide and then I'd have a breakthrough and then I'd have a backslide. And it kind of felt like I was doing some kind of two-step cha-cha with myself. But two steps forward, one step back is still one step forward and I was still making progress. But see, people just aren't done until they're done, and I had to get into enough pain to finally be done, ruining my life. And quite frankly, it was pretty easy to do when I stopped living the life that other people wanted me to live, and I started living my life and listening to my own body. That was the piece, that was the thing that actually like made the switch for me. See, I felt the need to numb it all out um, because I felt really awful inside. I didn't like how I felt. And so, like, if I could take something else to have me intentionally feel different, I chose that time and time and time and time again. And then one day I, waked, I woke up and I realized, um, you know, my son saved my life. He was the one that had me realize I'm growing another life and this life deserves to have something greater. But peeling back the layers of Oz and peeling back the layers of medicine in Oz was not like an overnight thing. I, I, I told you a little bit earlier that Western medicine saved my life, but it cost me my health. See, I was on birth control like all of my teenage years. Do you know what birth control does? 
It depletes vitamin B in your system. Do you know what causes bipolar type symptoms? Not having enough vitamin B in your system. Isn't that curious? And it's also interesting, birth control alters uh, a woman's thought process, her psychology, her psyche, her feeling, and her body so much. They, most types of birth control actually um, trick your body into thinking that they're pregnant. So there's a couple interesting things that happen there. Women that are on birth control choose different partners than they would if they were not on birth control. So how many people are in a pattern of perpetuating um, relationship problems? They just keep choosing the wrong person, but they're choosing the wrong person for them because they're not actually being who they are. They've been hijacked by something. This is a really interesting conversation. Now the other thing is, very curious, um, in regards to birth control in a woman's body. If you're like, you, your body thinks it's pregnant, you have an instinctual thing to want to like protect the baby, but this is a like fetal position freeze kind of position. I just wonder how many things, if your body thinks it's pregnant, I wonder how many things the energetic antenna of your body is picking up as a threat, causing your baseline stress to rise unnecessarily. And again, like I would need a whole lab and some cool gear, <laughs> not 200 square feet to be able to like really measure this, but I wonder. I wonder how many people actually need to be put on an SSRI or an antidepressant, um, or how many people like need a damn hug. And I'm not like talking a one-off hug. I'm talking about how many people actually like need to have some connection and some community with some other people. How many mental health issues would disappear if people were not drowning in stress, if they were not malnourished, if they were not poisoned with medication in this land called Oz? I wonder. Because I got to tell you, like, so... I'll come around to it. I've got so many thoughts. I'm so ADD. So when I got pregnant with my son, I cleaned myself up and he saved my life. And, you know, I'd like to say that I, I like stayed sober or whatever, but I didn't. Um, like I said, I did some cha-cha with myself. I ended up with um, an emergency C-section with him. I went to the doctor, I went to the hospital, my labor was progressing normally. I got to the hospital, they wanted to tie me down to monitor, monitor him. I wasn't able to get up and move around. My labor stalled, they put me on Pitocin, they gave me an epidural, 29 hours in, his heart rate was dropping, they did an emergency C-section. It was a really invasive surgery. I'm not gonna go into details, but it was very invasive. And I ended up getting two bags of blood transfusion. So I almost died on the operating table. Now they were able to save me. Thank you. I'm still here breathing. But I wonder, like, if it, Western medicine saved my life, but if they hadn't intervened, had my body been allowed to do what my body knows how to do, would I have needed the surgery in the first place? I wonder. And then after that, I, I made a decision with a different kind of birth control because I really didn't want that again. And I put a little thing called an IUD in my body. Now, I didn't know at the time they told me it was totally safe, but I didn't know at the time that the approval process to get these kinds of medical devices approved in this land called Oz, um, the way that it works, it's like if they've created something sort of similar in the past, they'll just like rubber stamp approve it. It doesn't matter if the previous thing ended up being effective or safe. It does, that does not matter. The only stipulation is, did we previously approve something sort of similar? Now that's really weird to me. Don't take my word for it. Go watch The Bleeding Edge on Netflix. It's really crazy. Um, it's really crazy. So anyway, they put this thing in my body and the first one was kind of fine. And they're good for three to five years. Then I got another one. And the other one was really not fine. 
And see, I didn't know this at the time, but the hormone that they put in that thing that I put in my body is the same hormone that they put in the plan B, the morning after pill. And I don't know where you fall in your belief system, but that's not my jam. That chemical, that hormone is abortive. That's not my belief system. But I had this thing that had an abortive hormone in my body for a decade. And it caused all kinds of issues. This and along with another couple of things I had gotten unknowingly. Like I got them knowingly, but I didn't know. I hadn't done enough research. I hadn't actually asked. I hadn't looked at the ingredients. I didn't look at, I didn't read uh, real life accounts of people having these things. And so I did this thing too back then. And it caused a whole slew of issues in my system. And it has been 14 years, 15, 16, I don't know, half my life of working to reclaim what has been like systemically stolen from me. Really over the last two and a half years of being on the road, I finally have been able to be careful about the air that I'm breathing and the water that I'm drinking. And I eat primarily local food from wherever I happen to be grown by people where I'm at because our food system, we lose nutrition while it's transported. They're really like Oz is an onslaught that's happening from every single direction. It is constant. It is pervasive. It has infected every single facet of our living. And it wasn't until I actually stepped away from all of that stuff that they were doing to my body and I began to correct the functional, the foundational issues within my body that my body was then able to become well. And I'm not 100% well all the time. In fact, my heart breaks as I'm seeing people with side effects from participating in this current human experiment. My heart breaks because I'm seeing things that I've dealt with. People being bedridden, people being debilitated, people having um, tremors and muscle weakness and brain fog, people having vertigo to the point that they can't stand, people having now suicidal ideation because they feel like such crap in their bodies, people dealing with pain that is so intense that it feels like their hair and their skin and their nails hurt. And you know what? My heart goes out because I've been there. I don't speak about anything that I have not personally experienced. And I am deeply concerned about what is happening right now with the medical system in Oz. I am deeply concerned with the amount of truth that has been covered up. See, they, they created allopathic medicine. Allopathic is petroleum and science lab based medicine. They created that and then they labeled. It isn't true. It's just a label. They labeled holistic care, which, which means you take into consideration the whole ecosystem, the entire biome, how all of the, the systems work together into account. They, they took that and they, they labeled it alternative medicine and they demonized it and they vilified it. And I wonder how many good hearted, kind hearted, well intentioned people have bought into that. I mean, gosh, like I did for a while. And I wonder, I wonder what else is possible. What else is possible outside of that? Now, I got to tell you, too, like every single body is different. I'm different. You're different. We're as different as our fingerprints, as our irises. We are unique. We are not all designed the same. Like, gosh, we've got evidence of that. Like, take 10 of us and go try on something that's supposedly one size fits all. It probably ain't going to fit any of us. Okay. It just is true. So if you think that that's the case, like we can't find a freaking hat that fits us all. Can't find a freaking scarf that fits us all. What makes you think that you could mandate or require or push something that's experimental on all the people? And what makes you think that you happen to know that person 
and how their body reacts and handles things better than that person. That's disgusting. What's happening right now is disgusting in the land called Oz. And you know what else is going to happen in the land called Oz? They've convinced a lot of people to be very, very afraid of a thing that has above a 99% survival rate. And now all the kiddos are going to go back to school in the land called Oz. And they are going to set up clinics, you know, little tables and, and booths inside your children's schools. And they are going to allow your children to come participate in an experiment that can and is having life altering sterilization and even euthanasia effects on people all over the world. They're going to bring that into your child's school and your child is going to be able to choose for themselves if they'd like to participate. I've also seen schools putting out documentation in the land called Oz that they can keep your children overnight in case of an emergency. You know, they declared an emergency over something that has over a 99.8% survival rate. They could declare a state of emergency at any point. If this is not concerning to you, if this is not having you want to actually stand up and stand for something, it should. Look, if you're not willing to stand for anything, you will fall for everything. And there are a lot of people that are. And yeah, it's, it's very concerning. It's very concerning because, see, if you actually do your research, and I wasn't always someone that did my research. I did a lot of things blind. Y'all, this is coming from the girl, like, I used to be at parties and people would, like, I'd be, like, passed out or some shit, and they'd poke me, and they'd wake me up, and, hey, Brooke, try this, and I'd be like, okay, not knowing what it was. I was that crazy. Okay, so I relate to being that crazy. I have done things where it's been like, oh, the crowd is doing it. I better go along. So this isn't coming from someone that hasn't been there. I've been there. I can tell you that the crowd is often led by great marketing and propaganda. That going away from the crowd, that finding your own way is always the path. So, you know, I don't know. I could talk about this medicine. I could talk about the land of Oz, like, till the cows come home. It'd be really cool to have some cows come home. You just got to get this. this. This whole thing is by design. And it's not designed for your well-being. Okay? It's just not. It's become scientific to not question any. Yeah, it's become scientific to not question anything. Blind faith is now a belief in science. Yes, it is. Science. Big quotations here. Science. But in the name of science. Oh, interesting. So your science is the stuff that's, uh, you know, blabbed about on mainstream media. That's your science. See, but when I bring actual science to the table, you try to discredit the doctors with the actual science because they've been censored or they've been fired from their position. You want to know why they were fired from their position? Because they're whistleblowers, because they're calling out the truth, because they're revealing the agenda. That's why. That's why. The people that continue to perpetuate the agenda in the land of Oz, they get to live. They get to talk all they want. They get to spew their stuff. So whoever you hear talking the loudest on those places, they're the ones spewing the most bullshit. You know, it's, it's like if you look at a narcissistic family unit. The narcissistic family unit wants to shut up the black sheep because the black sheep sees the bullshit and isn't tolerating it. And so in, in the narcissistic family unit, the narcissistic parent or whatever will always have a, a golden child and a black sheep. 
And right now in this micro macro model we're talking about, the golden children are the ones that are pushing the narrative that supports the agenda. Remember, the agenda is depopulation, sterilization, euthanasia. And, and not the humane kind that Dr. Kevorkian was doing where people were active knowing participants. No, this is genocide in the land of Oz. Genocide. See, because the people that have actually done the research, the people that have actually gone out and gathered all of the information, they're like, huh. Okay, so interesting. So this experiment thing, when they tested it on animals, First off, they only did one trial on animals because of how it turned out. It was really horrendous. Um, so the first time that they tested it on animals, within two weeks, every single participant in the lab rat study croaked. They died. Dead as a doornail. Now, granted, again, like, I'm not an ant eating the corn with the stuff. I'm bigger. I got a longer life expectancy. I got more tissue to work through. But when you adjust a lab rat, a mouse, to a human life expectancy, that two weeks equals about two years. Now that's very concerning. That's very concerning because um, I don't know. I mean, they lie about numbers all the time. They created a common core of math just to make people not want to look at numbers. <laughs> but that's very concerning because a lot of people, I know a lot of people have decided to say yes. So y'all, this, this is a rally cry from the heart of Oz. You've got to know thy enemy. You must understand what we are actually working with. This is a level of sick and twisted that you can't comprehend. And it's really interesting because, you know, in the narcissistic family unit, they'll uh, elevate and pedestal and bolster and build up the golden child. Look at the golden child. They got a gold star. This is my favorite one. Oh, pay no attention to the black sheep. And you know what they do to the black sheep? I was the black sheep in the family. Really interesting. Like, my brother and I kind of, like, behaved in the same ways, actually. Um, but he was the golden child. It still is. I'm the black sheep. You know what they do with the black sheep? Oh. Well, the black sheep. I mean, look at her. She just doesn't even have her shit together. She lives like that. She is homeless. Look at the black. She was an addict. Oh, the black. She, she messed up. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, you know what I did? Hmm? Sure did. Spent a lot of years addicted. I did a lot of those things. There's not, uh, to my knowledge, crocodile. I never did that shit. There's very few things I did not put in my body. There were very few things I did not try to use to numb out with. Okay, like fully owned. And I hurt people and I walked on people and I was a shit show. It's true. And I clawed my way out of hell and nobody goes to hell and finds their way out without coming out a superhero. Okay, the, the further down into hell that you have gone is the further that you can reach into heaven when you choose to. And see, I know that about myself. But the narcissistic family unit wants to paint the black sheep. The black sheep, the one that actually has firsthand experience, the one that actually has gone out and done the work to get out of Oz. The narcissistic family unit wants to make the black sheep, wants to shun the sheep, that black sheep. They, they want to paint a picture that, that this, this one that's different, that doesn't buy into the narrative, that doesn't participate in the family drama, that isn't just going along with it, they're the bad and wrong one. Okay, it's time for a whole bunch of black sheeps. Bah, <laughs> okay. Uh, 
it's time for us to start to rally together and to have each other's backs. Um, because, you know, one thing I know for sure from nature is when a predator is going to hunt, they will always go for the single one out. They'll always go for the one that's alone. And where um, a pack, like if you have like a whole pack of hyenas, if the hyenas can single out the lion, the whole pack can attack that one lion and that one lion falls. Well, we've got a bunch of lions here. We're not really black sheep at all. We're, we're lions. <laughs> when we step out of the role of playing that and we step out of the pattern, right? We claim our lion and lioness selves. We step back into our pride of who we really are and what we really know. We don't allow ourselves to be singled out like that. We actually rise as a united front. Then we have some real strength. See, because a single lion by itself against a pack of hyenas stands no chance, but a whole pride of lions against a pack of hyenas, those hyenas will run away cackling and scared. And though the hyena has these crazy jaws and this intense bite force, the lion can hear for five miles. The lion can send out a call five miles away and this magical thing happens where they fuse and they come together to stand a united front. And that's what I believe we're being called to do now. Sheep are real easily led. Real easily misled, I should say. You know, you could literally get a whole herd of sheep to walk right off a damn cliff. Ooh. Splat. 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 Don't let yourself go splat. Okay? Yeah, I know. I, I love that all of y'all are the black sheep too, because I seem to attract attract black sheep. They do say birds of a feather, they flock together. <laughs> and I think it's a good thing. Look, here's the deal. They're, the medicine system of Oz is throwing out all kinds of stupid threats. It's what the narcissistic family unit does. Well, if, if, you, don't, if you don't do what I say, if you don't listen to me and you don't do what I want you to do, you're going to be grounded. You're not. You can't come to the family event. Meanwhile, we're like, uh, y'all are crazy. You guys always like almost get in fist fights. Y'all chuck mashed potatoes at each other and set the house on fire. I don't really want to be at that family gathering. And they're like, Ugh, you're going to be written out of the will. You're not going to get to participate in this. Eminem, and Uh, cool don't really like you anyway. Don't really think like you anyway. Y'all have been jerks all the time anyway. Uh, and, and you know what? Like We've got to start to come to this realization. We've got to start to come to this because if they're going to kick us out of what they have created as society, as culture, which quite frankly is a bunch of bacteria growing in a damn petri dish, if they're going to cut us out from that, no, we're just going to create our own. Thank you very much. See, because we've got life experience, and we've got know-how, and we've got skills, and we've actually picked up the knowledge along the way, and we are making an informed decision. And there's not any kind of carrot you can dangle over our heads to get us to do that thing. But <clears throat> God, they don't want me to say it, and I'm going to say it anyway. After I drink some water. There's nothing that they have that they could take from me to dangle over my head. Oh, I can't go to a big concert anymore. Okay, um, so I'm I can't spend two hundred and thirty dollars to go sit in a stadium full of other people with your bright lights to watch you lip sync. Sweet. You know what? That bomb ass barbecue place down the road has a great local band that's playing today. And I'm going to go eat some damn great barbecue and shake my butt with some other cool people somewhere local. 
Okay, problem solved. Oh, well, you're not going to be able to go to our, our restaurants. Great. Well, your restaurants are fast food. It's full of sand and chemicals and, quite frankly, human baby parts and horse meat from land called Dawes. Um, so you can take that crap that's actually designed to make me ill and you can shove it where the, sh the sun don't shine. Because I'm one of the few that actually knows that food comes from the earth. And there is earth underneath my feet everywhere I go. And so I don't need to be dependent on you. You guys, like, we've got to actually start to have these conversations. And we need to start to actually evaluate, do I actually require all the things that they say that I require? Because if you think that you require the things that, you, that they say that you require, they will dangle those things over you. They will take which you choose to buy, what you choose to own, and they will make it so that those things then own you. The truth is, the only thing that you actually have to do today to survive, you, you need to eat. Yeah, I, I need water. Good clean water, like good luck finding that in Oz. Whole other thing. You need water and you need to eat. You don't even need to eat today. You need to eat sometime soon-ish. That's it. You don't freaking need a Mercedes. You might want one. You don't freaking need a 10,000 square foot mansion. You might want one. Think you want one. You don't need that. You need food. You need air to breathe. You need water. And if the weather gets real crazy, in that instance, you might need shelter. See, but the land of Oz has pulled us so far away from that which we actually need. And it has sold us a whole bag of things that they have told us that we need in order to look right. In order to appear to be successful. In order to appear to be enough. But the question is, are any of those things ever actually enough? Or do you just still have that empty, aching hole in your soul? See, call me crazy, but I think that way of living is crazy. I think it is absolutely stupid absurd to spend all of your time working to pay for a home that you never get to be at. That feels stupid to me. It feels stupid to me to break the bank to try to look a certain way. In fact, uh, the other night I had a really interesting, I, I guess I wasn't really in it. I was sitting next to a really interesting conversation, being the nosy person I often am and eavesdropping. And they were talking about um, life and being successful and they had just met us. And you know, when people meet us, they're always kind of curious. Cause they say, where are you from? And I say, a distant land. And they say, well, where are you going? And I say, I don't know yet. And they say, what do you do? And I say, whatever I feel like doing. I live my life. And they say, <laughs> and I laugh. See, because many people are spending their entire lifetime jumping through hoops to try to get to the place that I've already created in my life. And it was really interesting. I had this conversation and I with these people, the same conversation, and then later I overhear them talking. Yeah. I overhear them talking, and um, they're saying, well, yeah, so-and-so is a teacher, and it doesn't matter how much she makes. It's the title that makes her successful. She went to all that schooling. Oh, and this person's a lawyer, and that makes them successful. I know, oh, and this person does that, and then they, like, kind of contradicted themselves and they said well this person does this and they make this much so they're successful <laughs> I like kind of chuckled to myself um because then the next statement was yeah we're all just kind of working till we can afford to hit the road and travel full time and it's like check already been doing that Look, the land of Oz tries to convince you that you got to do all these things and check all these boxes in order to, and it's just a total crock. You got a dream in your heart. There's actually a way to have your dream right now. If the dream is actually true to your heart, there's a lot of crap that you have uh, picked up 
that is just mental chatter, monkey mind crap, things that you think you want because someone else said that you need to have them and you want that person to approve of you. You want to feel like you fit in and belong with that person. But if you actually check with your heart, you actually check with what God has designed for you, it's, that's not what you require or what you really need. Pam says, I need air, food, water, shelter, love, and God. Yep. Yeah. I need air, food, water, shelter, love, and God. And you know what? A lot of those things that Oz tells you that, they, that you need um, become your God. They end up owning you. So... Like, chickadee, check yourself before you wreck yourself because you will find yourself living a life where you feel completely empty and you've done all the things and you've been as busy as you can possibly be and now you're medicated to the hilt and, oh my God, you've got five more years before you can retire and oh, I'm just putting all this stuff off that I want to do until then because, because why? Because the land of Oz told you that's the recipe, but how many people is the recipe even working for? So you go and you worship false idols and you follow false prophets and you think that that's a recipe for success when the truth is the path to your greatest fulfillment, the path to your wellness, the path to your abundance is to actually follow your heart. The path is to make sure that you are like, you don't have to earn a living. How many people go out and they struggle and they stress to try to make money to pay for the things that they actually need to survive, which is food, water, air, shelter, love. And then they find God somewhere else, like in a bottle. It's inverted. It's backwards. None of nature, the birds don't go out to like hustle and grind to have their life. They don't. Now, do they go take action to make sure that they're fed and they, that they have shelter? You bet. Okay, and do you need to, like, totally walk away from the whole monetary system? No. No, it exists. Honestly, you need to learn how to play by the rule, pl learn the rules of it so you can play the game because it does exist. We have money that comes in every month into our home, and we do use money. Don't get that twisted. But is money your God? Is that the thing that you're so focused on, thinking that that's the thing that's going to provide you with the fulfillment? Are you depending on some kind of lab-created medicine to try to resolve the issue in your body when the issue is really that you're too stressed out about money that you don't even really need to have? Says who? You know, like the land of Oz gets you all wrapped up in debt and all kinds of things because debt then stresses you out. And they, they make money off of you being stressed. They make interest off of you. They make money off of you, like, fueling up on 700 coffees a day. I hope no one drinks that much. That's a lot of coffee. You'd be buzzing. But you know what I mean. They actually, like, feast off of you being frantic. Stop being frantic. All right, I'm going to tell you one last story before I go. When my son was five, we came to Texas to visit my dad. My dad was living there. And there's this cool wakeboarding lake. It's like just a little pond, but they've hooked up this cool pulley system. And so, like, multiple wakeboarders can wakeboard at the same time without a boat. Um, and they could do all kinds of tricks and stuff. So we went to this place and they had a teaching pond and my son was learning how to wakeboard. And so he's got on a life jacket and they've got a cute little helmet on him and he's in the water with the instructor and he's got this instructor that knows exactly what to do and how to do it. And he's just listening intently. He's listening to what, to the instruction that's coming through. He's doing exactly what she's saying and poop, he pops up right up out of the water and he pops right up out of the water and then he does it again. And then another kid comes and she's older than him. She actually really reminded me of younger me, um, but she's got her life jacket on and her helmet on and she's in the water and they're 
providing instruction, but she is just absolutely flailing. You hear this like wise voice, this person that is like been there, done that, and they're they're speaking to her, and she is just not listening. Ah, flailing, frantic. She didn't get up. She just got more and more and more frustrated. And so they decide, well, let's take a break and let's let's let Gavin have another turn. <laughs> And so Gavin has another turn and he listens to the instruction and he pops right up out of the water. And when they bring him back, he says to the girl, he just says, uh, why are you freaking out? Take a deep breath, relax, listen. You're completely safe. You are protected. You have on a life jacket and a helmet and just listen to the guidance. You're gonna be okay. <laughs> and I'm like, yes, sir, young Yoda. <laughs> so, you know, I heard that and immediately God followed it up with another statement. God told me, Brooke, you've been flailing. Brooke, I've been trying to give you guidance. I've been trying to whisper to your heart. I've been trying to tell you which way to go but you've been so caught up in the flailing and the freak out that you are not hearing me. But you are here and you've got on a life jacket and a helmet, got a hedge of protection around you, you've got a thing that is going to help keep you safe as long as you are listening to my guidance. And as soon as you begin to heed that guidance and you begin to listen, you're gonna pop right up. You're gonna get right up out of that. You know what, I think, I think that's why I've had to say this message today, and this ended up becoming a little bit uh, kind of church and Oz, so welcome to my crazy brain. The moment that you choose, you know, there's a space between what you want and, like, where you are and what you want. There's a gap. Um, there's a space between the land of Oz and the great beyond, which is where your life begins to take shape and begins to happen, where the promises of God become real and relevant and tangible in your life. But there's a space in between. There is a space in between and it is called indecision ditch. And it is called indecision ditch because you are indecisive. You are in a decision. And the longer that you are indecisive, the longer you will be in decision ditch. So if you can imagine, you've got like God on this side and you've got false prophet, false God, false idols over here. When you are indecisive, when you are serving two gods, your energy is split and you are absolutely stuck in a rut in really uncomfortable terrain. So you could be listening to the, the people of Oz. You can be listening to the machine of Oz and the machine of Oz has taken nature and it has inverted it. It has perverted it. Or you can be listening to nature. You can be listening to source. But when you're torn between two and you're not willing to make that decision, that leap, you are stuck in indecision ditch and being there is a choice. Okay, you're not choosing is a choice. If you've got something that over here, God has been like, you've got to go do this source, your higher self, your higher power has been pulling on your heart saying like, hey, you need to come this way. If you are not heeding that call, you are sticking yourself in indecision ditch. And it is real uncomfortable there, but the choice, it is the choice that gets you out. It is that choice to amend your behavior, that choice to repent, that choice to turn and move a different direction that actually gets you out of the ditch. And it happens like that. Now, a lot of people get stuck in indecision ditch because they think they're going to make the wrong choice. But the truth is the only wrong choice is to not choose. So you can make a choice and you can set off down the path and then you can choose something new 10 seconds from now if it doesn't turn out the way that you thought. But the getting stuck and not making a choice has you stuck. All right. Um, we have a really loving creator 
this source energy that flows through us, that is having an experience of itself through us, through our perspective. And you can't ever really mess it up and you can't ever really go wrong because there is a whole spectrum, you know? Um, I think that when we had that original major, major fall from God and we fell to such depths and depravity, people fall on a whole spectrum between that and, and God's ideal. And we are constantly missing the mark. We are constantly sinning. That's an archery term. It means to miss the mark. But we can constantly reshoot as well. And God doesn't hate us for us having missed the mark or, or fallen or made the decisions that we have. What, what we are asked to do is like, hey, when you notice it, when you notice, when you acknowledge that that's what's happened, then get up, pick up your mat and walk, choose a different direction. You're not stuck. And in that very moment, you get to have a new reality. In that very moment, you can be gifted a new perspective. In that very moment, things begin to shift. This is a spiritual war that we're in. It's a spiritual war and it is happening also very much in the physical, but you cannot turn a blind eye to either side, the physical or the spiritual. You must actually know thy enemy. You must actually know what's going on so that you can choose something else. And we've got amongst us all kinds of wisdom and know-how and experience, all kinds of dreams and visions and new things that are asking to be brought earthside, but they just won't work if you're still operating in the space of Oz and the energetic frequency and the state of being that is Oz. You must actually come fully back to your nature back to nature, back to your roots, back to connection with yourself and with the source. And when that conduit is clear and that connection is clear, that's when we have the power to do something with it. There are a lot of people right now that are choosing to remain in Oz. It is not our job to stand there in indecision ditch, trying to like lasso people down into the ditch with us before we leave Oz. It is not our job to try to like holler back and hey you know we've now reached the point where people have decided everybody in your life has had access to the same information that I have had the same information that you have had it has been available if it wasn't available then how the hell did I find it okay but there are a lot of people that we love and that we care about that are choosing to still stay stuck in Oz that are choosing to not break these generational chains, that are choosing to not stand up and say something when it's obvious that all of this system has been created by design. They're choosing to be blind to it. They've chosen it. We must now like realize that and then turn and what would we like to create now? What do we see as possible now? What do we know is available now? What is this great beyond? Because, yeah, they have you on a yellow brick road, but, like, it's into Oz. And I wonder what would happen if you got off of that path and you started to take a road less traveled. What would happen then? And is it even really less traveled when you look at, like, human history? No, we're going back to roots. They took self-sufficient people and they labeled them savages. That's how they got people to move into these major metropolis areas called Oz. Okay, they took people that were self-sufficient, that were living off the land, that were able to heal themselves, that knew how to grow their own food, that had their own shelter, that, you know, those basic daily needs were met. And they convinced them that because they didn't have a high-rise tower to live in and a fancy car to drive that they were somehow poor, that they were somehow passing over opportunity repeatedly. Now, see, I see it the other way. I see it because it's inverted. The people that are living in Oz are missing out on the opportunity to know their heart, to have time to connect, to be able to go after their dreams, to create with wild abandon, to know where their food is coming from. The people of Oz have passed over the opportunity to know them themselves and their creator on an intimate level that is beyond 
anything that Oz can create. And I think that's where we're going to leave it for today. Thanks for joining me for a wild chat into the great unknown. Let me read these comments real quick. Yeah. Y'all, I love you. Thank you for being here. Um, if you're interested in, in catching up more, if you want to see these, these are uploaded to my YouTube channel, and I do have a telegram where I'm writing out a, a book that's want, wanted to be written for a long time. So come join us. The pull? Oh, yeah. Pam says, the pull for me has been to study natural healing and first heal myself so I can help others by example. Yep. Yeah, you know, that's the thing. You've, we've got to do the work on ourselves. How many people right now are uh, pointing out the speck in your eye without looking at the plank in their own? How many people right now, it's so easy for them to be like, oh, look at what you're doing. But they've got their own um, trauma stuff running the show, and they're not willing to look at that. So the greatest thing that we can do for humanity is to go within ourselves and to break those chains and to make those decisions, right? Like this is an inside job. Work on yourself, work on your family first, get yourself and your family really right. And then as a byproduct, like yourself and your family becomes a living, breathing example, a model of what's possible and what's available. And you become the light of the world. All right. So that's the work that there is to do. And, um, you know, this is an unprecedented time in human history. I think the last thing that I would say is that those that know, those that have the eyes to see, those that have the ears to hear, um, we need to get prepared. And it's one of those things um, we need to pray for the best and we need to prepare for the worst. Uh, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. And it's time to be willing to stand no matter what. It's time to be willing to potentially fight no matter what. No matter what that cost might be. Um, and unfortunately, we've got a lot of weak-willed people right now that aren't willing to stand or fight for anything. And so um, they just want to watch everybody fall with them. Okay, is there anything else I need to read here? Love y'all. Oh man, Vinny, dude. Vinny says, I saw a Cairo last night for the first time in about 10 years, slept amazingly, woke up with a smile and smashed a workout. Hell yeah. Dude, like seriously, I can leave there feeling like a totally different person. And I wish I could pull up um, photos right now, but I'll post it. I'll post it because one of the chiropractors I had, I saw a couple weeks ago, um, had this sign in his office. And the gist of it was, it's like, <laughs> a fall is not a big deal. Um, a fall off a ladder is not a big deal. A slip in the driveway is not a big deal. But when these things start to happen and one little bone gets moved out of place and then this nerve gets pinched and it's called this um, subluxation. Am I saying that right? When it gets moved out of alignment and these nerves get pinched and your organs are no longer communicating with each other, it creates a cascade of events. I actually had a chiropractor once he had a, he had read a story, knew a guy, I don't know, whatever, doesn't matter. Um, this, he knew a guy that was a marathon runner. So this guy was like in absurd shape, like to go run 26 miles, you're clearly in great shape. But the guy ended up dropping over and had a heart attack. Well, he had a heart attack when they went in and they did an autopsy. They realized that he had this thing happening where there was a, a disc out of place, the nerve was pinched. His heart was not sending a signal to his brain that, hey, I've got too much cholesterol buildup. There's a block happening right now. Because um, normally your heart would send that signal and it would go to your brain and then your brain would trigger something which would send another signal, which would allow that cholesterol to be flushed out of your heart because you've got a health, a self-healing system. So this guy died of a heart attack because his brain and his heart were not communicating with each other. I wonder how many people, like, it's, it's simply this thing. You're out of alignment. Your body is out of alignment. And so things aren't working. Um, if you're 
if you're in the Denver area, I know I've got some people on here that live in Colorado. If you're in the Denver area, Dr. Zarka at Integrated Health off Dry Creek and I-25 is amazing. And then also Dr. Scott Monk, he's in the DTC area. Um, he's a functional medicine doctor and he's incredible. If you guys are dealing with weird invisible illness symptoms, if you know you've had too much stress, if you've been a victim to the medicine of Oz and you wanna recover, that dude, Dr. Scott Monk, drscottmonk.com, pick up his books. Um, he talks all about functional illness and he talks all about the havoc that it's creating within your ecosystem and your body. And he also talks about how to stop that hijacking and how to take back control. So um, if you've been dealing with you know, body pain, insomnia, joint pain, uh, un they call it invisible illness, it doesn't show up, learning disabilities, whatever, like seriously, go talk to one of these two dudes if you're in that area, go check out their website and begin the path to healing because healing is available for you when you give your body what it actually needs to function appropriately. All right, okay. I love y'all. I hope you have a beautiful day. I could really talk about this forever and I'm sure there's about a half a gazillion other videos to come. Um, pop by Telegram and YouTube, the B space, like B-E, okay? Oh, names again, yes, it is. Can I write in the comments? My face always looks funny when I do this. It is Dr. Zarka, Integrated Health, and Hutch, he's right by you. He's just a few exits away. And then um, Dr. Scott Monk, his website is drscottmonk.com. And you can get his books direct through his website. Dr. Scott Monk also has uh, all kinds of supplements and things that you can order direct through him. He's got great prices to help you get your body back in line. Um, I guess the last thing I'll say before I go, y'all, I have to, I supplement my body quite a lot. Our, our food system, our soil is completely nutritionally devoid. So even if you're really careful about what you're eating, um, you're still likely not getting everything that you need, unfortunately. Okay. So you probably need some kind of supplementation and most people are living a really high stress lifestyle and a high stressed um, kind of way. So you need to be doing some things to actually supplement that. You need to find your breath. You need to be doing meditation. You need to be relieving yourself of the emotional baggage. And um, check out check out this stuff and you can go down that rabbit hole, okay? Because everybody's body is different. All right. Much love. I'll talk to you all soon. Bye.